Behold, an excuse for me to buy three games twice. This is a bit of a strange trend Nintendo did uh, around the first year or so of the Nintendo Switch's lifespan. Uh, these are uh, what many would deem starter packs for Nintendo Switch games. So these three right here are the heavy hitters of the first year of the Nintendo Switch. Of course, we have Breath of the Wild, then Splatoon 2, and finally, Mario Odyssey. But of course, the first thing I thought about when I played Super Mario Odyssey is, I don't know where to start! Thus, Nintendo put out these re-released versions of the game, including strategy guides uh, in these uh, slightly larger cardboard boxes. Uh, but strangely, uh, this wasn't the first time they did this for these two games in particular. So around the holiday season of 2017, Nintendo put out like the Explorer edition of Breath of the Wild, which included this exact guide and a full-blown map. Then a couple months later in early 2018, I believe on the same day as Kirby Star Allies, uh, Nintendo put out a Splatoon 2 starter edition with this strategy guide and a pack of stickers. And then in the fall of 2018, they re-released these two uh, without the map, without the stickers, and put out a Mario Odyssey starter pack with a traveler's guide. Each time they did an edition like this, it would cost $60, so, you know, <laughs> why not? It's not like these guides cost any extra money, but uh, they actively took away, you know, an element of it <laughs> in the uh, re-releases. You don't get the stickers, and you don't get the map with uh, with this version, and it costs the same exact amount of money. I mean, it's whatever. Did they even need to include the guides to begin with? No. Well, at that point, what's the point of these editions anyways? These are just kind of strange oddities at this point, uh, and they're kind of hard to find online. There's only a couple of listings I could, uh, I could get my hands on, and even then, they're getting up there in price. Uh, are they worth it? No. Oh god, no, especially the Mario Odyssey guide. I got a bone to pick with this one. It's pretty bare bones. So it's just a basic cardboard container. We get the Mario Odyssey Traveler's Guide and a copy of the game, and an interesting aspect of the uh, copies of the games included in these bundles is that uh, they're, they're different designs box art wise. A couple of Nintendo Switch games that uh, come inside larger cardboard boxes have this where uh, the actual game case doesn't have the SRB logo, it doesn't have a standard back and all that. It's a unique design which is pretty interesting though uh, it always bugs me because uh, you know like like why what's the point of this like come on just makes me feel weird when I pull this game off the shelf and it doesn't have an ESRB logo like it looks naked and the back of the box like no text I mean sure that's fine more room for beautiful art I guess but uh, honestly speaking uh, I, I feel like uh, the marketing riddled back of the standard box uh, just looks a little more appealing than just basic promotional shot of uh, Bowser's airship in the game. But the inside uh, is pretty much the same as per usual with Mario Odyssey. The main star of the show here is the Traveler's Guide. Now I feel you're about to say, wow, look at how thick that is. That's a pudding thick guide if I've ever seen one. It actually ends around here. It honestly ends pretty abruptly too. I mean, look at this. You have the Snow Kingdom and then... Uh, French. I guess they wanted to avoid spoilers, but there's no actual like <laughs> end to this guide. It just kind of just kind of stops there, which is a uh, pretty pretty weird, if I'm being honest. And the actual guide itself, it's fine. It's it's well laid out and everything. Uh, the little little elements like this just kind of confuse me. It's just pretty roughly low resolution photoshopped out uh, models of Mario here. Uh, which is weird for, like, an official Nintendo guide in the year 2018 when this released. It's fine, it does the job. Sometimes you can help the low-resolution artwork, but uh, still a little weird, because that's kind of the only place where uh, the artwork is uh, pretty low-res. I think this would have been a lot cooler if they uh, really leaned into the brochure style of Mario Odyssey, how uh, in the game when you pause and, and enter the map screen, of uh, any kingdom, it just kind of looks like a travel brochure. And this has some elements, like it kind of looks like a travel brochure, but uh, I think it just would have been cool if they uh, leaned a little more into that because this is, uh, you know, like when we get into the actual kingdom stuff here, uh, it's it's a little more of a basic layout rather than like, oh man, this is a, this is a hell of a brochure. A deep wood secret. So this is like talking about how in the wooded kingdom in Mario Odyssey, uh, when you kind of go down deep, 
into like the uh, the darker areas of uh, of the Wooded Kingdom. Uh, you, you know, you you can get the, through the whole underground of it. Uh, but but the picture they show here, like I. I can't see anything. It's pitch black. What are they trying to show here? I mean, this isn't bad. I'll, I'll gladly take this as a little freebie. And that's what it was, you know? It didn't cost any more than the standard copy of Mario Odyssey. Uh, but it just feels a little basic. Especially how it ends so abruptly and it's literally only like 40 pages. This was obviously done just to kind of give uh, Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and Breath of the Wild kind of uh, a bit more life on store shelves, uh, like, oh, a shiny new edition of the game. Uh, that way Nintendo could put out another press release. Uh, the games would appear in like the store catalogs or on the brand new release shelf, or just the fact that uh, there's a bigger box on the shelf. So then like, oh man, look at that. It catches your eye a little more. But Mario Odyssey never had that before. Zelda and Splatoon had releases like this. Uh, and these are kind of uh, slimmed down versions of that. I don't actually have the Breath of the Wild Explorer's Edition and Splatoon 2 Starter Guide. Uh, and uh, honestly, from what I can tell, the Explorer's Edition is even harder to find. It's really damn hard to find that online. This one is still kind of hard to find, but it's not nearly as hard as the version that comes with the map. I'd honestly argue that the Collector's Edition of Breath of the Wild is easier to get than this. Uh, it's, it's gonna be more expensive. But uh, this one, I just don't think a lot of people know about or uh, really care about. But here it is, the Breath of the Wild Explorer's Guide. So this guide compared to Mario Odyssey's is a lot more in depth as in uh, they fill up the entire thing with content. It's nearly a hundred pages and none of it is other languages or anything like that. Uh, but I will argue that the uh, format of it is definitely not as interesting as Mario Odyssey's. Looks pretty basic. Uh, that's kind of a problem I have with Breath of the Wild and uh, Tears of the Kingdom's UI design in general. It's very clean, very easy to tell what things are. But like, man, italicized aerial text. And yeah, the layout of this uh, it's nice, it works, it does the job, but it's just a little bland when uh, it's just kind of like this text throughout the whole thing. Uh, it does the job, but uh, this is definitely more of a very light walkthrough of the game. It doesn't really walk you through specifics other than the core concepts of the game. Uh, it, it just kind of helps you, uh, you know, set out and understand what all these things are. What are these shrines? What are Koroks? All of that. Other than that, it's a pretty basic guide that's just here to kind of get you started. It even, you know, advertises the DLC pack here. I would say Mario Odyssey's is definitely a lot more fun to flip through. Uh, the beginning of this guide is pretty cool. We have like a slight history of Zelda here uh, with just a much more interesting uh, design and layout. Uh, and then it goes into the Breath of the Wild stuff and uh, it just kind of feels like a fifth grade level nonfiction book. But then we have Splatoon 2, one that I have not opened yet. This is in immaculate condition. Uh, I actually had to settle for buying Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey used. Uh, which, uh, you know, grr. But Splatoon 2, baby, I found this brand new. You know what that means, clank. Somebody pops out the box cutter, they're either opening up a Splatoon 2 starter pack, or you should run, or both. There we go, no going back now. I almost forgot Breath of the Wild's different case design without the SRB logo. Uh, you just have a Guardian here, and then Splatoon 2's uh, we have this kind of cool little uh, logo collage, this little sticker-esque book looking thing, which would have made a lot more sense if they included the sticker pack with this, but I digress. We have the Splatagy Guide. This is my first experience with the Splatoon 2 Splatagy Guide. And uh, yeah, this feels like it's probably the best put together of of all of the guides. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty pretty embarrassing that I could tell uh, that by just kind of giving it a skim. I mean, who's actually reading guides these days? You kind of want to look through this uh, for the design and, and just kind of skimming things here and there. And uh, one thing I've always really loved about Splatoon is that they always go all the way with making everything feel uh, coherently Splatoon, whether it's the graphic design, the world, the characters, all of that. Whenever something is Splatoon themed, it always looks Splatoon themed. Whereas with like the Breath of the Wild guide, I mean, yeah, there there was some Zelda insignia there. Uh, the titles had a Zelda font and there was some uh, borders that were, uh, you know, Zelda themed, but uh, 
for the most part, that could have been for anything. Yeah, this is definitely really well put together, really colorful, really great. Uh, this, this really reminds me of some of the best manuals from back in the day, which, uh, yeah, this is kind of what this is. This is kind of Nintendo uh, making up for the fact that uh, they never do manuals anymore because that's what this pretty much is. And uh, to some extent, that's what the Zelda one is, Mario Odyssey's one. Uh, instead of uh, strategy guides, this feels a little more like, you know, like pretty premium instruction manuals. So yeah, they would have been doing this regardless back during like the Wii days and GameCube days. Uh, but regardless, this was kind of a cute, cool little thing for them to do in uh, 2017 and 2018. I don't think it made much of a difference in terms of sales, considering that, you know, they, they put these out and then that was pretty much it. They didn't do it for any of the other Nintendo Switch games, but I think it was kind of a cool little tactic to get people interested in these games again, even though these games are kind of the evergreen titles of the Switch lineup. You know, are you really gonna have no reason to play Mario Odyssey in 2020, 2021, all of that, you know? But keeping in mind how these cost the exact same price as the games by themselves, this was kind of cool. Pretty unnecessary, all things considered. I mean, like, you don't need <laughs> guides with these games at all. Uh, I think Breath of the Wild is probably the most, like, non-user friendly at the beginning, and even then it's pretty goddamn user friendly. But hey, I don't think people buy guides for the actual guides themselves. It's kind of more so to flip through something and just see uh, something that you appreciate and, and uh, you really like explained to you in a certain way. And hey, you might even learn something about one of your favorite games with a guide. But at that point, sometimes I gotta ask, like, why not just do, like, art book or just like a map with Breath of the Wild instead of the guide, you know? I mean, like they did that with the Explorer edition, they included both, but uh, I, I would have assumed the map would be a lot more, uh, you know, cheap to just include here. You might also not even need the big ass box here. You might have been able to fit that in the game case itself. But I think saying that you're including a guide just holds a lot more value. Uh, it just seems like, oh wow, that sounds useful. And in terms of fitting something into the game case itself, I think half of the reason for doing this is to uh, have a bigger shelf presence with these cardboard boxes, you know? And at that point, why not pick these up? They're only 60 bucks and you get something free with it. Even though these versions of the game are actively worse deals than when they released Breath of the Wild Explorer's Edition and Splatoon 2 Starter Edition. But hey, if it wasn't for these cut down re-releases, we might not have gotten the Mario Odyssey Traveler's Guide version. Oh, thank God it cuts off at the Snow Kingdom because it's just so cool. I don't think I could have taken any more.